answers. Oh, sorry. Josiah. One twenty. Lots of agrees. I love math and Michelle class because we can see it in different type of ways instead of seeing it in one perspective. We should do easy problems, problems, and then at the end it starts getting harder and harder and then we get better at it. It's really important that we have students at a lot of different abilities in the class, but they all know that they all can and have to have exposure and being able to access the fifth grade material. I like exit tickets because like if you finish it then you go out to recess early. And they just have one problem. It just tells the teacher that if you need more help or mm -hmm. if you're ready to go on to the next lesson. It's usually just like one to three problems and it matches the learning target of the day for math. And if it was like one mistake or a common mistake that a bunch of kids made, then I know like, oh, that was on me, then I need to go back and change my teaching practice because this was a misconception that I didn't address um, the previous day. And sometimes it's kids are just struggling with some basic math sense and, and like number abilities. So then we pull them and work with them in small groups. Um, so being able to just kind of see the different mistakes students are making allows me to be a more effective teacher. If you wanted to, you can put a fraction inside this, right? Your numerator, can be a fraction. The IABs in general, at least we're hoping, so right, are focused on on the, on the primary work of the grade. And so for us, when we really think about the exit tickets that we're doing, um, in particular the exit tickets that we're collaborating on, because that collaboration time is so precious, when we're pulling the topics from those exit tickets, we're pulling the key understandings for the grade level. We're not trying to assess, for example, like, a discrete procedural skill. We're really trying to think about looking at exit tickets that really get to like what's the conceptual understanding that a kid has about this topic because that's what we know. We know that if we can get our kids to have really strong conceptual understanding of a topic, in some ways it doesn't even matter what kind of question they're asked, for example, on the ASPAC about that topic because if they hold that deep knowledge, um, then they'll be able to successfully answer any question about it. So they get practice with the interface, they get practice with just the concept of testing and the kinds of testing they're going to get. And for teachers, it gives us a chance to see how are our kids experiencing these assessments now and what are some things that we can do in order to get them as ready as we can. We spent a lot of time the last couple years with our instructional leadership team, our ILT, helping give them the skills to go in and lead those teams and make sure that they're focused on looking at data on a weekly basis and then what they're doing with that data um, to try and get them in these cycles, what we call DDI, data-driven instruction cycles. Um, and it's, that's always a challenge because there's so many things happening in a school, but the tighter we can get those cycles, um, we think the better learning and the, the more our teachers are going to be able to take what they're doing in collaboration and apply it back to their classroom in the next couple of days. It gives teachers a chance to see like, wow, I haven't even talked about this topic, but look at that. They must have accessed a bunch of prior knowledge they had. They did really well here. So it helps teachers gauge a little bit how kids are coming in and what kids already know. Um, and the second time around, it helps us kind of identify if kids haven't grown in a particular area that, of course, we expected them to. It also informs if teachers want to pull differentiated groups and work with kids on that.